What's happening, everybody? On today's show, it's a crossover edition. We're previewing the SEC game of the week. It's Tennessee versus LSU. we got Caroline Fenton from Locked on LSU and Eric Kane from Locked on Vols. They will both join us to preview this game. Locked on SEC crossover edition starts right now. Our Locked on SEC, your daily podcast on the Southeastern Conference. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. And what is happening, everybody? Welcome into Locked on SEC. It's great to have you guys along. Today's episode is brought to you by Upside. Download the free Upside app and use our promo code LOCKED, L-O-C-K-E-D, to get $5 or more cash back on your first purchase of $10 or more. Or more. Without further ado, let's jump into it. Let's welcome in our special guest from Locked on LSU. It is Caroline Fenton. And from Locked on uh, Vols, it is Eric Kane. Guys, how are you? Are you getting excited for this game yet? I have been excited for this game for all season, honestly, (laughs) all season. So it's, it's, it feels kind of surreal that it's already here, but I'm very excited. And I think that everyone in in each of our respective fan bases feel the same. Yeah. Caroline, you have the unique perspective of kind of covering both teams. So that's, that's going to be a whole lot of fun for you this week, but no, it's a big time game. Uh, This has been a game that's circled on every Tennessee fans calendar for the entire off season, fun road trip, uh, challenging team, challenging environments. Uh, thank God it's at 11 a.m. kickoff, right? So uh, looking forward to it. Yeah, I think you are a party of one. Say, thank <laughs> goodness it's an 11 a.m. kickoff. <laughs> well, guys, as we jump into it real quick, we'll start with Caroline. Um, kind of give me an assessment on where you are on the Tigers right now sitting at, at 4-1. and one. Are they about where you thought they'd be? Are they exceeding expectations? Where are you on LSU right now? Yeah, you know, being four and one and two and oh in the SEC so far, honestly, probably exceeded my expectations. And to be completely fair, I didn't really know what to expect from this LSU team. It was a, a, a an entire team full of newness, new coaching staff, so many new players, both in the transfer portal and, you know, true freshmen coming in um, in this 2022 recruiting class. So I didn't know what to expect, but all I wanted was can Brian Kelly at least build a solid foundation to continue to to build off of? Can we at least show signs of progress? Can we at least show signs that Brian Kelly, that was brought in to kind of clean up this program and to discipline this program, can we see signs of that? And I think so far, we have seen that. I think so far, we have seen that Brian Kelly is starting to build a really solid foundation and wins over Auburn and Mississippi State, albeit maybe not the prettiest wins, they're wins nonetheless. Um, So I think I would say, yes, they have exceeded expectation. And, And if I could you know, use one word to describe this LSU program, it's progress. And it's, you know, from Florida State to Auburn, we've we've seen a lot of pro- progress from this team. And, you know, you have these issues there, of course, issues arising in the passing game, some discipline issues in terms of penalties. But I would say overall, week over week over week, this team has gotten better and this team has built confidence. So confidence in this team and confidence in Brian Kelly so far, I would say so good. Eric, kind of same question. Obviously, uh, you guys get the uh, the not much needed bye week, as uh, a lot of people are like, you know, uh, very early for a bye week. But uh, as the Vols sit here undefeated, are they right about where you thought they'd be at this point? Well, you joke, but I mean, Hinton Hooker got banged up a little bit against uh, against Florida. Of course, Cedric Tillman's out, Dylan Sampson, Warren Burrell, D. Williams. I mean, this team was pretty beat up there for uh, for four games into the season. Um, you know, if I said that I thought Tennessee would be undefeated right now, I'd be lying to you. I, I, I thought Pittsburgh would get them. I thought Florida would get them one of the two games. I thought you would just kind of, you know, step your toe because that's what Tennessee does typically uh, in, in the early month of the season. So from, from that perspective, you know, that, that's progress here for in year number two for Josh Heupel. You're going on the road and you're finding a way to win in overtime against Pittsburgh. You're uh, staying at home and staging off a uh, uh, a, a really talented Florida team that, of course, had the game of their lives, and Anthony Richardson had the game of their lives, but a team that you were just better than, but you got the monkey off your back. And so from that perspective, I think Tennessee has been, you know, progressing in year number two with Josh Heupel. Uh, this offense is about where I thought it was. I didn't think Hendon Hooker would be – I mean, he's better than he was last year through four games. Uh, we'll have to see if it keeps up. I don't know if I was expecting that, but knew this offense would be good defensively you know we'll, we'll see you're just four games in of course it's not been too great so far um how big of a step can you take i'll be intrigued to see but uh it's a good start for tennessee no doubt about it they're uh, uh they're off and running as we start to kind of count down to the game happening this weekend guys 
uh, Caroline, let's start with you. What's the biggest storyline, I guess, for LSU this week? Is it Jaden Daniels? I know he was a little banged up. Ryan Kelly says he should still be good to go. Uh, what's the biggest storyline for LSU, in your opinion, this week? I would say it's Jaden Daniels, and it's beyond just the injury. Uh, of course, you know, against Auburn, he had kind of a, a kneecap to kneecap collision. And Brian Kelly said in his 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 press conference earlier this week that he was going to be 100%, that he was fine, that it was just some pain that he couldn't work through in the middle of the game, but it wasn't a long-lasting injury. So that's good. Um, So Jaden Daniels, per Brian Kelly, is 100%. But I think it's Jaden Daniels going beyond the injury because we didn't see much from Jaden Daniels against Auburn. Jaden Daniels passed for 80 yards against Auburn. 80! And LSU was able to get a win. And of course, that offense was really carried by the running game, and that game was really carried by the defensive line, being able to create plays and create turnovers. So the question here with Jaden Daniels and the biggest story with LSU is can Jaden Daniels take advantage of a Tennessee secondary that has proven to give up a whole lot of passing yards? When you look at Anthony Richardson against this Tennessee secondary, he was able to throw for more than 450 yards, and he hadn't thrown for more than 200 in the three games leading up to that. That game. So I think the question is, can Jaden Daniels take some of those risks and be a little bit riskier? This is what Brian Kelly said. He said, don't be don't be reckless, but be risky and take advantage of of this really talented LSU wide receiver room. Maybe you have some tight windows and maybe you're going to have to throw into traffic. But can Jaden Daniels overcome that and make those throws and take advantage of these pass catchers? Can LSU use the passing game to supplement the run game to be able to take advantage of, of what I think to be Tennessee's biggest weakness, and that's the defense and specifically the secondary. So that's the biggest question going into it, and the biggest story is can this LSU passing game continue to evolve? Eric, same question for you. Biggest storyline for the Vols going into this one. Yeah, I mean, going into the Florida game, it was an injury situation. Um, Tennessee's a bit healthier now, obviously, getting the bye week and all that. I would still be surprised at this point in the week. Things can change. I would still be surprised if you see Cedric Tillman out there. I think uh, Alabama would be the more likely game of the two. Um, so we will see. Obviously, Tennessee got by Florida in the passing game, and Hendon Hooker was fantastic without Cedric Tillman, but you want him out there. But I think the biggest storyline kind of on Jaden Daniels as well for Tennessee, it's – it's how are you going to defend him? You've seen this Tennessee defense go two different routes in a span of three different games against Keaton Slovis and Pittsburgh. This defense was ultra aggressive. Blitzes from the second and from the third level, playing different games up front and just getting after it. Against Anthony Richardson in Florida, you rush four, you rush five, you drop seven, you drop eight, and you gave a 10-yard cushion. You know, what's this defense going to be? In my opinion, this defense isn't fantastic. The secondary, as Caroline was, was just pointing out, is not – is not fantastic. It's not going to win you any awards here. Just do what you do best. Play to your strengths. Get after it. If you give up a big play, you might have given that up in two or three plays after that anyway, right? So uh, it, it's difficult because of a mobile quarterback. I understand that. But I would pressure uh, Jaden Daniels much like you did in the Acker game, much like you did in the Pittsburgh game earlier this season. So that's what I'm looking out for. What's this defense going to be playing like? Aggressive? Or is it going to be playing conservative? I think it needs to be more aggressive. All right, guys, hold it right there. When uh, we return, we're going to get into the key matchups to watch for in this one in just a second. Thank you guys for making Locked on SEC your first listen every day. I want to remind you about our friends over at Upside. From cringing at the pump to getting an eye-popping check at your favorite restaurant, inflation is hitting us all where it hurts, and it really hurts. That's why we started using Upside. The Upside app is an incredible app for anyone who buys gas, groceries, likes to dine out. With every purchase, we are earning cash back thanks to Upside. To get started, just download the free Upside app. Use our promo code LOCKED, L-O-C-K-E-D. That's going to get you $5 or more cash back on your first purchase of $10 or more. Next, you claim an offer for whatever you're buying on Upside. You check in at the business. You pay as usual with your credit or debit card, and you get paid. Uh, compared to credit card rewards or loyalty programs, you can earn three times more cash back with Upside. Download the free Upside app right now. Use our promo code LOCK. That'll get you 5 bucks or more cash back on your first purchase of $10 or more. That's $5 or more cash back on your first purchase of $10 or more. Use the promo code LOCKED on the free Upside app. Roll along here, Locked On SEC. Continue our crossover edition with Eric Kane and Caroline Fenton. And guys... 
as we start to get a little bit more into this game, we discuss the key matchups to watch for in this one. And Caroline, I know you kind of hit on it a little bit, but uh, what's the key matchup in your mind that you're looking for in this one? I think that this is going to be the biggest test for this LSU defense so far. And that's saying a lot, seeing as though LSU has already played and beaten Mississippi State. And that's an incredibly high-powered offense. It's a difficult offense to defend. But I still am going to say that this is going to be the most difficult matchup for LSU's defense. So that's what I'm looking for. Is LSU's defense versus Tennessee's super quick, you know, super high-powered offense. And I'll go even as further to say LSU's defensive line against this Tennessee offensive line and to see how LSU can get pressure on Hendon Hooker. That's really, you know, the, I always, before every game, I say my three ways that LSU could win and my three ways that LSU could lose. Little peek behind the curtain of what's coming up next on uh, Locked on LSU. One of my keys to this game is getting pressure on Hendon Hooker. And this Tennessee offensive line has done a pretty good job of protecting Hendon Hooker. Is that the offensive line or is that just Hendon Hooker being able to extend plays with his legs and being athletic? I'm not sure, but either way, Hendon Hooker has been protected. So it's how can this LSU defensive line keep up first with this with this Tennessee offense because that's not an easy feat. It's a very, very quick offense. So how can LSU's defense keep up and how can they stop it? I mean, Tennessee puts up massive yards, massive, t- massive points, and I don't think that's a that's any sort of you know secret here. So how can LSU's defense stop it? LSU's defense has undoubtedly been this team's strongest, strongest position group. I believe that the LSU defense single-handedly beat Auburn because they were able to get LSU on the board. They were able to get momentum when LSU needed it. And they were able to make stops when LSU absolutely had to make stops against Auburn, especially, you know, most notably, you know, interception when, when Auburn was driving into LSU territory. So I look at this. How can LSU's defense create turnovers and give LSU's offense an opportunity to score more points? And how can LSU's defense stop Tennessee's offense from scoring points and slow it down? So that's what I'm looking for is off LSU offense, Tennessee defense, and more specifically this LSU defensive line that's proven to be a force so far this season. Yeah, B.J. Jolari and, and mm-hmm. Ali Gay, they've been having a great season. Eric, uh, even your- freshman, sorry, excuse me, I don't mean to interrupt, but even even freshman Harold Perkins, you know, with the way that yep. Matt House has been so creative to use that true freshman in so many different areas is going to be fun to watch as well. Yeah, big interception last week uh, at Auburn. Uh, Eric, in your opinion, what's the key matchup to watch for in this one? Yeah, I, I got a couple actually, and, and kind of picking up where, where Caroline was there. I think it's Tennessee's offense. I think it's Tennessee's passing game with Hendon Hooker. Who again? It's you know for Tennessee, it's four games in, so I understand it's fun and it's good for people like us. But the the Heisman number conversation, all that, it's like well, let's, let's wait till you get into six or seven games in the conference schedule, right? But still playing an extremely, extremely high level. Um, but going up against this LSU defense, which number one is good, number two, the secondary, as you guys know, I mean, you know, Gordy, I I counted what five transfers in the defensive backfield this off season. Is that correct? Uh, it's um. It, it's pretty mind blowing. You're taking two safeties from Arkansas, taking three corners. You know, one from Ohio State, one from Oklahoma State, one from Louisiana. All of those guys played a ton, and they've all kind of been working in and out of the lineup. I know Banks got injured the other night, uh, the transfer from Ohio State, but they've all been kind of working in there al- a- a- alongside Jay Ward, who's been at LSU for a while, just trying to learn how to play against one or play with one another, gelling back there, and all that. Uh, this will be the sixth game that those guys have played with one another, and now you're going up against this offense with Hendon Hooker. Now I hear you with Mississippi state. I think Will Rogers, the most, uh, you know, one of the better quarterbacks in the sec that nobody talks about ever, but it's different. Um, a lot of his success is, you know, from seven to 10 yards on passing attempts when Hendon is going to chuck it down the field a little bit. So it's going to be a little bit different. I'm so intrigued to see what Hendon's passing game with or without Cedric Tillman looks like against that experienced, albeit not together, secondary of LSU uh, another one is I mean yeah BJ Ojolari the the one-time Tennessee commit I've said that about a hundred times this week uh man he is he is a good player and uh you know Gerald Mincy you know he, he's gonna have his work cut out for him Darnell Wright at potentially at times gonna have his work cut out for him uh, Jabari Small Jalen Wright the running backs and I have to get up there keeping the tight end six-man protections with the Princeton fan Jacob Warren Tennessee's got to have all eyes on BJ Ojolari and that's going to affect the way they block him, but potentially it could open up something on the other side for Gay as well. And so, no, we'll see. Those are a couple of ones I'm looking at. And, uh, of course, Jabari Small got going on the ground in the second half against Florida. That was good to see. This LSU defense, the front seven, very stout against the run. Tennessee 
is going to have to run it to win this football game, and it can't just be Hendon Hooker. So those are a couple ones I'm looking out for. I think it's going to be a really, really, really good game. Yeah, it's going to be a lot of fun. And again, as uh, Caroline hinted at earlier, it's an 11 a.m. kick. The LSU fans uh, weren't that excited about it, but since then it's been announced that it's officially a sold-out game. So, uh, look, it's a big one. I don't want to downplay it too much, but I will say this is one, if you're Tennessee, you can lose and still have everything in front of you you want to play for. And kind of the same thing with LSU in that, you know, if you're a West team, it's always good to lose to an East team and vice versa. That said, though, it's still a big game that LSU first opportunity for Brian Kelly to put a uh, marquee win against a ranked opponent in uh, in Tiger Stadium. And for Tennessee, hey, look, all the hype and the buildup of the offseason, let's go beat a rebuilding LSU team. Yeah, yeah, no doubt. I, mean, I, I just I look at this game kind of like the – now, I, I think LSU is a lot more talented than, than, than Pittsburgh was. But I look at this game much like a, a game against Pittsburgh. Like in year two, what you've already done, the progress you've already made – just go get this win. Like, go on the road. I understand it's going to be a sold-out crowd. I understand it's going to be a hostile environment. I think the early kick plays into Tennessee's favor for sure, though it's not going to be a huge difference. It's much better than playing at LSU at 3.30 or 8 o'clock at night for sure. Um, but just go get that win, right? I mean, LSU, it's there's there's talent on that roster. Um, there's some depth in areas that where it's not developed yet, obviously, when you had about 40 scholarship players at the end of the season last year. I mean, that you know Kelly's done a nice job of – getting this team to buy in already. But this is a game to where if you don't come and ready to play, you can get your ass kicked. But if you come and you play the way Tennessee's offense can play, you should be able to win this football game despite what that defense does on the other side. Just play some complimentary football. So, again, I think this is uh, I think this is the game of the week in the SEC. And I know A&M and Alabama are playing, but I truly do think this is the game of the week in the in the conference. And I, I'll go even further to say I think this is a really interesting test for two teams that haven't really had a whole lot of hype. So this and this game for both teams is the most hyped up game so far this season. And that's saying a lot, saying as though Knoxville was, I didn't have any service in the city of Knoxville the entire weekend of the Florida game. But I think that's different because it was at home and there was so much playing into Tennessee's favor. Now they're on the road in a really rowdy and raucous environment. And I understand people are saying, you know, the 11 a.m. kick plays into Tennessee's favor. I don't really know how much it does, to be completely honest with you. In a sold-out crowd, it's gonna be, it's going to be loud, and it's going to put a lot of pressure on, especially Hen and Hooker. You know, moving to a silent cadence and just being in, in a, in a new environment. I mean, this team has never played it in Tiger Stadium before, and I think that this is the most hyped-up game for LSU, probably since you know Texas A&M in 2019, probably since the national championship in 2019, and there's. Not a lot of turnover from those teams. So I think it's going to be interesting to see how these two teams handle such a hyped up game for two different reasons, but handle all of the pressure and all of the eyes that I know inevitably are going to be on this game. Um, You know, LSU, a young team, a fairly inexperienced team, at least together, and Tennessee, a team that's that's finding success, a whole lot of success and a whole lot of hype for the first time in a while. It's a good point, Uh, you know, because as much hype as there was for the Florida game, the Vols were a big favorite in that game. And so this is their uh, closest, uh, you know, in terms of the point spread and those folks in the desert, uh, closest match for Tennessee so far this year. Coming up next, we are going to jump into our score predictions and what needs to happen for these teams to win here on Locked on SEC. Continue on here, Locked On SEC Crossover Edition, talking with Caroline Fenton of Locked On LSU and Eric Kane of Locked On Vols. And guys, the moment of truth. Caroline, we'll start with you. Score predictions, what needs to happen for LSU to win this game? In order for LSU LSU to win this game, they have to get pressure on Hendon Hooker, and they have to force turnovers. And also on the offensive side of the ball, Jaden Daniels is going to have his – needs to have his best day passing. He needs to throw the ball. He needs to make some of those riskier throws. He needs to move the ball downfield. And while those short dink and dunk three, four, five yard, you know, pitches to the tight end or pitches to the running back are important that moves the sticks. I think Jaden Daniels needs to be a little bit more snazzy and a little bit more, um, a little bit more risky on the offensive side of the ball. I think if 
LSU's offense can find this new dynamic of the passing game and the defense can continue to put pressure on Tennessee, I think they'll have a good day. But overall, if I'm going to make my official prediction, I do think that this Tennessee team has way too much consistency. Consistency week over over week because, because Tennessee has found an identity. And I do think consistency year over year. Same head coach, same coordinators, not a lot of shakeup in the coaching position, same quarterback, you know, a, a very similar personnel than they had last year. This team just has too much experience together. And this team has found its identity and is very hard in its identity. And LSU is still trying to find its identity. So I think overall, you know, Tennessee just might be too much for LSU. Um, so I would say Tennessee probably by a field goal. But if LSU is able to add that extra layer of a passing game, I think it could it could be anyone's ball game. Eric, score prediction. What needs to happen for the Vols to win? I think if Tennessee can get up on LSU like Auburn did, like Mississippi State did, I think Tennessee can put them away. I think Tennessee can bury them. And, yes, I understand Tennessee had a 17-point lead over Florida in the fourth quarter. Uh, so, yeah, you, you truly never know with the secondary. I, I get that. But, um, I mean, LSU's shown great, great resiliency. Uh, and that's why I say, I mean, it's, it's really impressive. I, I did not see this buy-in coming because that's what it looks like from the outside. It looks like buy-in. And I did not see that coming really when Brian Kelly took the job, and especially after week one. But credit Kelly and his staff. I mean, the, the, he's got this team to buy in, but uh, off to some slow starts, especially offensively. And so I think Tennessee can take advantage of that. Like Caroline was saying, an identity. They've never seen this tempo before. I think Tennessee can can really utilize that, especially in the second half, you know, with or without Cedric Tillman. So I like Tennessee in this one. If you can just play some complimentary football, I, I don't expect this defense to be as bad as it was against Florida. I don't expect this defense to be, you know, tops of the SEC week in and week out. I just think that if you can play some complimentary football, and this week in particular, keep Daniels in the tackle box. Don't let him evade. Uh, the, de the defensive ends have got to have a good game and be aggressive, rush the quarterback, much like you did against Pittsburgh. I think Tennessee can come out with a win. So I like the Vols in this one. It's not going to be easy. Uh, if you don't come ready to play, you can get beat. Uh, but I do like the Vols because I just I trust the quarterback way more. I trust the offense. I like the 34 to 30, hello over just by the hook. <laughs> yeah, I like it a little bit more low scoring. LSU's defense has done a good job of, of limiting uh, teams. Obviously, what they held Will Rogers to just 214 yards passing. Mm -hmm. Look at what they did to Auburn. Shut out Auburn in the second half this past week. So I am think it's more like a 31-24 Tennessee game where – offense still does their thing. But here's my question for you, Eric. You use the word complimentary football. What's up with the Tennessee run game? Because uh, Jabari Small has had issues there. Not as balanced as they like to be. And if I'm a Vol fan, that would concern me going into this game. Yeah, no doubt. Josh Heupel always says for this staff and for this program to accomplish what it needs to and for them to be where they want to be, at the likes of it clicking like it did at UCF or at Missouri at points in times, Tennessee has got to run the football. It's got to run the football effectively. Um, it opens up everything. I mean, that that's football 101, right? So, you know, Jabari Small, he had one 40-yard run against Florida in the third quarter. That really got him going. Then he was getting about four or five yards a pop from there on out. He finished with almost 100 yards against Florida. Jalen Wright, I think, has, has ran um, his tail off this year. But he he's put the ball on the ground just a little bit, which is – which has not been fantastic. So uh, it's been a little underwhelming for sure. Um, Tennessee does not have a bigger back, and I think that they're missing that uh, certainly in some short yardage situations. So I think Hendon Hooker, a big part of the offense is his running ability, but it's so scary towards the end of that because he takes a lot of unnecessary hits. And so you don't want it to be what you rely on solely for the run game, but obviously it is uh, a big part of what Tennessee does. So We'll have to see. They're averaging over 200 yards a, a game, which is good, and they did that against Florida, which is good, an SEC opponent, but it's going to be a challenge against that front uh, seven from LSU that is really, really uh, good against the run. Caroline, as we kind of start to close things out here, um, both these quarterbacks, zero interceptions on the season. They're the only two quarterbacks in the SEC who have yet to throw an interception. Does that change on either side this weekend? I do think it does for Jaden Daniels. And I say that not as a knock on Jaden Daniels, but I can't sit up here and say, hey, Jaden Daniels, throw the ball more, make riskier throws, and then knock Jaden Daniels for throwing interceptions. 
Brian Kelly even said in his press conference, he was like, interceptions are going to come if you be a little bit more risky, but it's also the difference between reckless and being risky. Interceptions are going to come when you throw the ball more. That's why I do think the stat line of Hendon Hooker zero interceptions versus Jaden Daniels interceptions is just a little bit more impressive because Hendon Hooker throws the ball more and Hendon Hooker throws the ball downfield. Jaden Daniels, on the other hand, and rightfully so, he's still trying to get used to this offensive line. Of course, it's an offensive line that has only been consistent week over week from week three to week four from uh, Mississippi State to New Mexico. So this offensive line is still trying to figure itself out. Jane Daniels is trying to figure out the offensive line, is trying to build that chemistry with the rest of the offense. So it's understandable that he probably defers to the run more than maybe another quarterback, one, because he's very good at it, and two, because this offense is still trying to build chemistry. And you've seen so many times, you know, there might be an over open Kayshawn Booty 10, 15 yards downfield, but instead Jaden Daniels tucks the ball and runs it himself. Is that because he doesn't trust Kayshawn Booty? Is that because he doesn't trust himself? Is that because he doesn't trust the offensive line? I don't know the answer to that, but he's not making those risky throws. So I think that's why that might change this week because I think Brian, Brian Kelly is going to put the pressure on Jaden Daniels to throw the ball more. Now, is that going to be, you know, ultimately – how LSU loses this game is turnovers. I don't know the answer to that question. If Jaden Daniels is able to throw for 400 yards and a single interception, then great. I'll take that all day long. So I think that may change this week with Jaden Daniels just because this coaching staff is going to ask more from him in the passing game. And Eric mentions the slow starts for LSU. That has been – that is bugged me all season long that you know I never get too nervous in the first half because I know that there's going to be a new team in the second half and Eric is 100% correct if LSU is not able to get things moving quickly and come out of the gates and start moving the ball downfield and start putting points on the board in the first quarter at least it's going to be hard for them to kind of scratch and claw their way back in the second half but we've seen them do it against Auburn you know 17 nothing deficit and they were able to come back and win yeah and LSU first half against Florida State three points First half against Mississippi State, seven points. So if Tennessee jumps up to a twenty-one nothing lead, hey, don't panic, LSU fans. You got them right where you want them. So we'll I'm, uh, I'm not going to say I'm not going to sweat, but <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to be as stressed as I probably would have been in the past. Eric, closing thoughts as we wrap up. Well, first and foremost, I'm just uh, you kind of hit on it there, and we don't have to discuss it. But the whole Keyshawn Boudet thing, I just. One of the biggest mysteries in college football this year. Like, what what is what is going on there? I mean, one of the best players in the country, in my opinion. You look at the stat sheet; it's like, what is going on? Is this guy barely played? I know he's missed a game, but uh, yeah, I just I, I think this is a big game for both programs for what, uh, what both uh, coaching staffs are trying to accomplish. Kelly and your number one, if LSU were to get this win. Talk about a statement win in year one, where you, know, you weren't picked to win a, a whole lot of games, or really. You know, kind of get up there in the SEC for Tennessee again. This is a, a huge win on the road, uh, traveling to a hostile environment. Um, just rely on your strengths if you're Tennessee, which is trust your quarterback, let your quarterback go out there and throw the football down the field, and and we will see what happens. Um, I'll be there. I'm looking. I'm really looking forward to seeing what the environment's uh, like. And I know a lot of Tennessee fans are going to be making that trip, heading down to Beale Street on a Saturday, on a uh, Friday night, heading down to see Jordan Matthews play on a Thursday night as well. So. I think it'll be a fun road trip, so we will see. Tennessee obviously needs to get off to a good start. Beale Street's in Memphis. Bourbon Street in New Orleans. Bourbon Street. Oh, you know, Hang it. It's, it's fun. <laughs> almost it's almost fun. had a perfect show. Almost. It's alcohol and music. It's all the yeah, same. Yeah, after, after a few <laughs> drinks on bourbon, you might not know where you are either. There you go. <laughs> Thank you guys again for making Locked on SEC your first listen every day if you're listening to Locked on SEC. And, of course, uh, make Locked on LSU and Locked on Vols your second listen if it's not already your first listen. Great opportunity to check out Caroline talking all things LSU and Eric talking all things Vols. Guys, thanks so much for uh, joining us. And it uh, should be a heck of a game. Enjoy the game, everybody, and we'll talk to you guys again soon. Thanks, man. Hey, thanks.